It's the Celebrity MasterChef quarterfinals. I'm seriously nervous. Full stop. These celebrities are all passionate about food. I almost cried when I found out I was coming through to the quarterfinals. If I get through to the semis, I don't know what's going to happen. We're looking for that exceptional cooking stuff. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. Of course, I'd like to go all the way. celebrities have been battling it out for the chance to become Celebrity Master Chef. Our winner is Janet. Is Ewan. Is Ian. Is Gemma. Yes! <laughs> but now only the four best remain. Ian really cares about cooking very, very well. He knows the ingredients, he knows what flavours go together. We know he can really do it. Janet is probably the most experienced of the cooks. She's got it in her to cook really good food. She has bagged potential. Gemma's exciting. She has loads of flair, loads of creativity, and her dishes look fantastic. Ewan Thomas was an Olympic athlete. He doesn't do things by halves. He wants this competition. He is working very, very hard. I can't think of anything about today that isn't a challenge. I'm not even thinking about not making it. I'm feeling quite sick. I just don't want to go home first today. There's no room for error because only two of them can make it to the semi-finals. You are the best of your heats. You are the pick of the crop. Now we crank it up. We're going to give you a recipe. You're going to cook it. Is at the end of this classic recipe test, one of you will be going home. Good luck, ladies and gentlemen. Off you go. Following identical instructions, they have just one hour to create a classic steamed sponge pudding with butterscotch sauce and creme anglaise, or custard. Steamed sponge pudding, the important thing is that it's aerated. It's got lots of fluff to it. We're going to cream their butter and sugar really, really well, add their egg yolks to it, and then fold that flour through nice and gently to make sure there's lots of air. I love butterscotch sauce. Dark caramel first, you whisk it until it becomes this wonderful, velvet, beautiful sauce. And then for me, the most difficult part, custard. You've got to stir it over the heat till it coats the back of the spoon. Take it any further than that, scrambled eggs. Don't take it far enough, then it becomes runny liquid. It's just not right. Well, Ewan Thomas is one of the great master chef turnarounds. The guy was nearly out of the competition after round one. He was so bad. That sauce is far too sharp and your pork's overcooked. Not the greatest first round I've ever seen. The improvement in Ewan from one round to the next was immense. He came back and wowed us. Those spicy prawns were absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah, they're spicy. I really, really enjoy it. Thank you. Can he carry on improving, or is he going to fall back down again? That's the question. For me to win MasterChef, I'll just have to raise my game, just really shine. I've just got to be better than the others. This is last chance saloon, isn't it? For me, this initial bit is just about survival, just to get through this. I'd be very disappointed if I was to go out at this first stage, because I feel from the heats I only improve with time, and I have to get through to, uh, to improve. It's simple. You and is this within your comfort zone? If I'm perfectly truthful to you, this is my uh, worst nightmare, thinking methodically, which is hard for me. I'm just 100 miles an hour with everything I do, so I'm having to really breathe and make sure I'm reading it properly. Yeah, just got to try and do it as well as I can. Ian is a lovely cook. You can tell he's done a lot of cooking. That guy's got some serious cookery skill. Very few times do I become quite speechless by a dish. I applaud you on this one, Ian. I think that's brilliant. Ian's issue is timing. He knows the ingredients. He knows what flavours go together. Will he get his timing right? Where's the sauce? It's a crying shame. We have three quarters of a lovely, lovely dish. I have a problem with timing, and that's what I have to address. I have to be more in control. You know, it's the tiny little detail that makes or breaks something. And that's what I'm learning. Ian, you turn that recipe over, the look of despair upon your face. I love eating puddings, but I've not really cooked that many. Um, unknown territory. You said I can cook. 
and that's a huge compliment for me. So I want to I want to prove that I can. You've had 15 minutes already. Janet Ellis has bags and bags full of cookery knowledge. She loves to cook. She can do big, big flavours. The idea of fennel and bacon and mango together on one plate is almost impossible, but it works. She's quite clever in what she puts together, but she does take the odd risk. The flavours are so big, you can't taste the salmon. Have you been bitten by the MasterChef bug? I think I just discovered a little spark of something that's more than just, ooh, these are nice ingredients, let's, let's put them together. But you're used to following a recipe? I'm not used to following a recipe to the letter. I'm used to thinking, oh, that sounds nice, what about? Or maybe, well, I haven't got this, I'll try that. I want to show the judges that getting through wasn't a fluke, that technical ability is not the only thing I do, but that the mix of flavours and the way it's presented as well makes them think, I want to eat that. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just ten minutes. Gemma Bissex is one exciting cook. She has loads of flair, loads of creativity, and her dishes look fantastic. I think it's a very pretty plate. But sometimes with Gemma, presentation is actually the most important part rather than the delivery and the flavour. The mash and the tuna would have worked absolutely perfectly. Salsa and the tuna would have worked absolutely perfectly. You put the two together, it just doesn't work. I like organisation, so my three courses I'm looking forward to because I've practised them so much. <laughs> but the recipe, I could, I could fall at the first hurdle, so fingers crossed I don't. How are you feeling, Gemma? I thought that I'd actually be OK. I thought that um, today that I wasn't actually nervous at all, and I'm not. It's just I'm feeling a bit out of my depth at the moment. This is really difficult for me. I like to do things my way. Going by rules, kind of, I think, is a bit... I get ahead of myself, I go to the next sentence and then I forget that I've got to do the one before. You've got to be in control here, otherwise you're going to knock yourself out of the competition. Yeah, I know that. Six minutes! Step away from your bench, your time is up. <sighs> right, we wanted from you one steam pudding and two sauces. Let's have you ones. Your custard wants to be thicker but you have a very, very light sponge and a bitter, sweet butterscotch. It's almost perfect. Thank you. Your butterscotch sauce is delicious. Perfectly made, bitter, yet sweet, really well done. They said that sauce was very nearly there, so hopefully I will be through. Um, I would be bitterly disappointed if I go out at this stage. Ian, let's have yours. Your sponge is so close. Your butterscotch sauce is nice, it's sweet. Your custard is perfect. I think it's a good job. I would happily eat it all. I think you should be quite pleased with yourself. I'm really pleased about doing a pudding at last, because they said the custard was perfect, which was great. I'm really chuffed. <laughs> You have a lovely sponge, but that is just liquid sugar. I can't taste the custard, it might make me ill. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's now scrambled egg. Your custard is curdled, your butterscotch is not brown. Tough day at the office for you, wasn't it? I messed up on this one, didn't I? It's not good. Your custard tastes quite nice. <laughs> no, it does. The fact is it's just cooked too far. It just doesn't look very good. The curdled custard was annoying because, obviously, I should have paid more attention to it, but I let the pressure get the better of me, and I think that's what showed today. Curled your custard at the start, strained it off, 
and we can see on the spoon the little lumps of curdleness. It's a good sponge. It's the right consistency. It's cooked very, very well. Your butterscotch sauce, not quite butterscotch. A bit caramel rather than being butterscotch. Lovely light sponge. Nice vanilla and nice sugar in the custard as well, but you, you, you let your custard go too far. It's not great, but it's not a disaster. I should have done a lot better with that silly custard creme anglaise. So, I, yeah, I feel disappointed. We're going to ask you to leave the room whilst Greg and I sit on the sofa and discuss which one of you is going home. Ian doesn't like cooking dessert. I think the guy made a really good fist of it. The custard for me was a huge surprise and the best in the room. And he got his timing right. I've got Ian through. Yep. Ewan did have a wicked butterscotch sauce. Perfect in every way. Ewan, for me, has done a really good job. The sponge was good, the custard taken off too early, but the flavour was right. After that, it's tricky. It's between Gemma and Jana. Gemma, she had a nightmare, John. She curdled her custard. She didn't cook the sugar enough to give it that dark brown look. Gemma's custard actually had really good flavour to it. Yes, it was overcooked, but it's not inedible. Well, Janet's sponge uh, wasn't bad. Her caramel wasn't quite there. Her custard didn't work at all, but she did try and rescue it. She tried to pass it through that fine sieve, which, it, which shows she's thinking. They both made very good sponges. Both of them, their butterscotch sauce wasn't right, and both of them, their custard was curdled. All four of you have come in here and really tried hard. Classic recipe test is not an easy thing to do. Unfortunately, right now, one of you is going home. The person leaving us... ..is Gemma. Sorry, hon. I'm feeling really disappointed with myself. I feel a little bit like I've let them down, and that's why it's a shame as well. I feel disappointed in myself, because I definitely could have gone further in this competition. Congratulations. But what you three now have to do is survive the next bit, because at the end of this round, we're going to send another one of you home. Let's cook. To secure their semi-final place, the celebrities now have 90 minutes to cook their own three-course menu. The further you get into this competition, the more serious it gets. If you're going to be here, you've got to do your absolute best and get better and better and better. Otherwise, go home. What are your dishes today, Ian? I'm starting with uh, smoked salmon on a chilli brioche, then a classic rack of lamb with some uh, sweet carrots and a white chocolate cheesecake. Today you had to release your demons, do a pudding. Do you think that's held you in good stead for today's competition? It's given me a lot more confidence, the fact that I'd never attempted a pudding before. What have been your weaknesses so far in this competition? Uh, control, timing. And can you get a grip on yes, all of them? Yes, I have to. If I want to go any further, that's the basic, that's the, that's the bottom line. If Ian can get his timing right, he's got some lovely food over there. sportsman, I'm so competitive, I don't want to go home without putting up a fight, so I'm not playing safe and I'm going for something that is quite difficult to cook. What are you cooking? Thai fish cakes and salad. Main course is going to be orange marinated beef with shiitake mushrooms and the dessert is a banana wrapped in phyllo pastry, deep fried, cinnamon, icing sugar, homemade chocolate and some cream. What do you think your food today says about you? It's going to say crazy, mad, hot, wow, like it. I don't like to follow the gang, I do what I want, and I don't think you can achieve anything worth achieving unless you do put your neck out. 
he is taking a risk. He's got lots and lots of flavours going on there. That's a lot of work to be done and a big balancing act to present it well and deliver the flavour. What are you cooking? Starting off with scallops on uh, shredded cabbage, then uh, meatballs in a spicy sauce with some rice, and then profiteroles with whipped cream and chocolate sauce. I want to go right back to the first round where we had mango and bacon and fennel <laughs> on one plate. Tell us what combination of flavours today is the big risk for you. The meatball sauce has got cranberries in it, maple syrup. <laughs> exactly. But if, if it works, the meatballs are a much deeper, more intense flavour. What is it you love about cooking? I think cooking's sexy. I think somebody who puts a good plate of food in front of you is halfway there. <laughs> If she pulls off that sauce with the maple syrup, the tomato, the soy sauce and the cranberries with those meatballs, I tell you what, she's got a fantastic palate and that is wow. My cooking is a combination of flavour and sensation. You know, if my dishes work as well as they ever have done, I want to get through. Seven minutes left. That's it. You're finished. You are finished. That's it. Can Ian prove himself with his starter of smoked salmon, asparagus, brioche and a lightly poached egg? Sweet bread, smoked salmon and that egg oozing all over it and then the green iron fresh of that asparagus is absolutely lovely. Every single flavour is distinct. Everything is cooked absolutely perfectly. The combinations work beautifully. Ian, delicious. Good, thank you. For his main, he's made rack of lamb on spinach with carrots and a port gravy. Lovely sweetness of red currant jelly, sweetness on the carrot hanging on to that well-cooked, soft, juicy lamb. I love it. Beautiful flavours, the sauce needs to be thicker. So that lovely flavoured sauce can stay in your mouth longer. I'm impressed. OK. There's some very, very good classic cooking going on that plate. Perfectly cooked lamb. Pink in the centre, nice and crispy on the outside and well-seasoned. That sweet sauce going beautifully with that lamb. I think it's a really elegant dish. Ian, it is a revelation to look at you and think that you can produce food like that. Very good indeed. Really chuffed. Really chuffed. Can Ian's white chocolate cheesecake meet the high standards he's set himself? The question has to be whether I use a spoon or a straw. It is a white chocolate cheesecake in flavour. I know it's your nemesis. I understand that. But there has to be a point whereby your desserts come to the same level as your other two courses. Oh, so that, the taste is divine. Yeah. Absolutely divine. That white chocolate, sweet stickiness, it's flavours that I just love, but it's a slop. It tasted fine, but that's not good enough. It can't just taste fine, it's got to work. I don't know what happened. Janet's starter is scallops served with crispy Chinese cabbage. Your scallops cooked absolutely beautifully. And I didn't expect the flavour that's inside the cabbage. There's a hit of fennel, there's all sorts of little spices going all over the place. I have one other bone of contention, mm -hmm. and that has to be your presentation. Those scallops are majestic beauties. They're like diamonds of the sea, and they should be treated as such. You have lovely flavours. I really enjoy the crunch of that cabbage with that aniseed flavour. Really enjoy it. It's an enormous plate of food for a starter. Her main is meatballs in a spicy sauce made with cranberries, maple syrup and chilli, served with rice. Right, here we go. 101 flavours in a pot. 
Oh. That meatball's not cooked. What? That meatball's raw. And it's very, very sweet. Very sweet. Too, too sweet for me. My palate's slightly confused. The idea of the tomato with the smokiness of that, that maple syrup is really lovely. And the cranberries, which give this sort of strange bite, are, are really lovely. But then I've got chilli coming in from somewhere else. There's some really good cooking in here, Janet. The combination is a little bit outlandish for me. Can her dessert of cream-filled profiteroles with chocolate sauce rescue her? Really cocoa-rich, almost bitter chocolate on top of it, sweet cream inside it. Classic, simplistic beauty. You're demonstrating huge amounts of skill by doing what you've done with these profiteroles. Good flavours. This shows undoubted cookery skill. Neither of them like that meatball dish at all. I like it, and I pushed it forward thinking, well, it doesn't look brilliant, but I hope they like the crazy mix of flavours, and they really, really didn't. Will Ewan's starter of Thai salmon fish cakes with chilli sauce show he's continuing to improve? I am not set alight by the flavouring, and I think if you're going to go Asian, it's, you've got to have some really, really strong flavours. I was really expecting some kick here. Lime kick, maybe ginger kick, definitely chilli kick. It's not unpleasant, but it just doesn't pick you up and give you a great big spicy kiss. You want Thai food. You want really street food, and that's what fish cakes are. They should be small, they should be bite-sized, full of flavour, and these don't have that punch of flavour to them, unfortunately. Will his main course of orange fillet beef with shiitake mushrooms and jasmine rice fare any better? First flavour you get is the real beefiness of that shiitake mushroom. Beautifully cooked. Really enjoy the softness of that beef. I think that is superb. The sauce is sticky and sweet and a flavour which I have not had with beef before. I think it's really, really wonderful. Thanks a lot. It means a lot. Thank you. Wow. I do. I think that's absolutely superb. For his pudding, he's made a banana crunch with chocolate sauce and cream. Chocolate, go through a crispy outside, end up with a sweet banana, I think is, is, is quite clever. It's a fun dessert and, uh, and the, its flavours are good. Lovely cream on the side of it. Really, really lovely combination. They didn't like my starter. I was down there and then all of a sudden, massive grin on my face, because John just said, basically loved my main course. He really liked it. I was just really proud. We have to keep two for a semi-final place and we're going to knock out one. I think Ian did himself proud today. I really like the poached egg on the salmon, lovely flavours. I thought his lamb was lovely. I really enjoyed those carrots. His sauce, the flavour was great, it just wasn't thick enough to last. His dessert was a complete whitewash. He might as well got a lump of chocolate, put it between two biscuits and said, there you go, guys, that's my dessert. If that would have been set, I'd have jumped head first into it. I thought that was just gorgeous. I'm still annoyed that I keep making stupid mistakes. Um, I can't think fast enough, but I'm sure that'll come. Um, yep, yeah, yeah, bring it on. Janet, true to form, was slightly experimental. We had three lovely scallops, cooked very well with a massive big pile of cabbage, although I really enjoyed the flavour of that cabbage. Her main course was a bit of an extraordinary combination. Cranberries and soy sauce and maple syrup. She likes to be dangerous. She wants to be a bit more exciting. Sometimes that pays off and sometimes it doesn't pay off. I thought the flavour of the sauce was, was too sweet. 
and I had a meatball that wasn't cooked. But Janet today proved her experience as a cook by making those wonderful shoe buns really beautifully light, filled with whipped cream, great chocolate sauce over the top. When Janet follows more classic lines, her food is good. I'd love the chance to go through because I think the first round you feel, oh, I can cook a little. If I get through this round, I might even think, I'm getting somewhere with this. Of the bunch, Ewan has the least experience, and we see that in his food. Those Thai fish cakes he did, skin inside the salmon, too much lime juice, which made the fish go all grainy. But I've got to say that the fella is learning really quickly, and he is throwing everything he's got into this competition. That beef dish was succulent. There was the orange in there, which just brought it alive with that smokiness of those shiitake mushrooms. Stunning. The dessert was fun. You went through the crisp, you got the soft banana, you had chocolate as well. You can see the fun in it, the frivolity that goes with it, the things that make you smile, the perfect balance of crisp to soft. We are watching somebody being completely and utterly bitten by a cooking bug. Look at my apron. That's not mucking about, that is me just giving it everything. I'm running around, I've got burns on my hands, and I, I just try my hardest. OK, decision time. Come on, you know who it should be. We know today has been a really tough day and you work really, really hard. The hard thing is we've got to send one of you home. Our first semi-finalist is Ian. Our second semi-finalist is Ewan. What did I say? <laughs> of course, I'm really disappointed, but those two were brilliant, and they really deserve to go through. I envy them, but I also feel scared for them. <laughs> I'm shocked. Semi-final. What are they going to do next? next. <laughs> Semi-final. <laughs> now I'm getting worried. Don't put it out your head for a bit. Maybe I can do it. Secretly, maybe I can do it. I'm proud. I'm proud to get free. Ewan and Ian will return for the semi-finals. But next time, 12 celebrities will be given the chance to come back and compete again for the title of Celebrity MasterChef.